If you want to save money on your electricity bill, or if you want to have a long-term backup in case of a power outage, like we had during that storm in January, well then, this video is for you. Wow, the sun is out. We're nearly getting three kilowatts input now. Very exciting. How are you doing? I'm Martin from Gardens for Life in Birdland Homestead. This is the third video in a three-part series where we actually test out the Vivor solar inverter. If you want to see how to set up your own DIY solar system, whether it's to power just an off-grid location like a garden, like an allotment plot, for example, or even your whole house, uh, watch the first video in this three-part series. I put the link at the end of the video or up here. And in this video, we're going to power our whole house off it, but not just for 24 hours. We actually powered it for 12 days. So these are the solar panels. So there's 10 400s here, so 4 kilowatts. Just ran with a Vivor cable here. It's a 6 millimeter square cable, 30 meters long. So it's a very simple setup here. Uh, so all it is is eight of these batteries here and we have them hooked up to our solar inverter. We did go a little overkill on the uh, battery wire so that's actually zero gauge so that can carry 168 amps so that's plenty for this unit here. I tell you what this is really exciting because I wasn't expecting to be able to run the house this smoothly actually off this solar system. It's only really a kind of a small solar system, but just about big enough to run the entire house off it, including the washing machine. We even cooked a chicken, a roast chicken in the oven, so it works fine for that too. That's probably the heaviest appliance of them all, and the uh, toaster is no bother to it at all. So really, if you don't run everything in the house all at once, it's fine. We don't, didn't have to worry about that at all though. If you spec the system up sufficiently, I have a theory that we could actually heat the house, especially in the winter time during the day. If it's a sunny day, we could actually heat the whole house with electric heat. It would save you money and you wouldn't have to heat it in the evening time as much. Actually, before we go on, I'm just gonna have to tell you, you couldn't possibly run the whole house with a cheaper system. This is actually as, as uh, price efficient as it gets. Um, I think anyway, I've just got all these different components, um, hooked them up together and it, sure enough it works. I'm actually no professional, I'm not a qualified electrician or anything like that and I managed to do it just fine. If I can do it, you can do it too. But if you're not sure about electricity, just hire an electrician because electricity is dangerous. If you want to buy any of these kind of components, uh, you can actually find the links in the description below and um, if you use our links, you uh, support our channel as well. And we'd like to thank you for that. And please do use our discount code BIRDLAND for 5% off anything Vivor. Right, I hope you can hear me okay here with the fan blasting uh, because we're currently charging the battery at over a kilowatt. But um, to get into the menu, so you can go up and down here to see all the different voltages and everything like that. Hang on, let me get closer. That's the voltage of the solar panels. That's the amperage. So 1.1 kilowatts work have we have coming in and 16 amps is going into the battery or 900 watts. If you want to get into the menu to configure it, all you have to do is hold the enter key. This is the enter key here. Then you get into the menu here. So I have the manual here for it. And let me tell you, the manual is actually very good. And I'm not just advocating this product because Vivor sent it to us. We have a long lasting relationship with Vivor already. And I had already been using uh, their products for the longest time, for many years. So these modes here are solar first, utility first, and then uh, solar battery utility. That's probably the one you want. So if you want to run it like a UPS, if the power goes down, the mains power, you want utility mode. To connect to our house, we're using two seven and a half millimeter square cables and um, ideally you want to change over switch if you have it wired permanently and perhaps use a qualified electrician that can certify it for you as well just to make sure it's all done right and it's all done safely and that you've got fuses at all cables on in between each device so what do you think about solar panels unreal I can't believe we're able to power the whole house just with what you see behind us here. Will you be able to charge your RC cars with that? Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Why bother with solar panels in Ireland? Because it's not that sunny that often actually. 
Even on a dull day, you can produce quite a bit of power. We produced almost enough to power the whole house, even on a dull day, when it was very cloudy, heavy cloud cover and uh, even black clouds at Garen. If you get a few dull days, the battery will uh, see you through it and you'll still be producing about 500 watts per hour during the day. Even a couple of hours of sunlight will top up your battery in no time at all. So today we drained the battery. 54.4 is where we want to be at, 100%. Let's hook up the generator all the way in the back of the shed. And that handle really makes it so much easier. I wonder will it still start? That petrol in here is probably since, it's been in there since January, I'd say. And um, I'd say it'll be grand. It's only about six months old. So petrol on, let's see here. This fella off, 230 volts anyway, but we have it off at the moment. It might take a few goes. Oh my God, I can't believe it. It started up straight away, amazing. Excellent. 93 dB, I can confirm that. Appear, it would appear we have no draw. 50.8 volts, we are at an all time low. I think we're down to about 15% battery capacity now. So we'll see if we make it through the night. All right, so last night the battery bank definitely dropped below the minimum and we did run out of power eventually this morning before the sun came up. It's okay though. The battery is charging again off the solar and it would appear that the power is too dirty for it to work. And when I used the cable, the other cable that I have here, it even off the AC, it was actually tripping. So then I made up a new cable and I tested it. It's still not working with the generator, but I'm glad now. I'm very happy to see the battery is actually being charged off of the AC. So now we're back on the solar and I just turned on the washing machine and it seems to be pulling Good bit of power now, 2.2 kilowatts there. And I think that's because it's heating the water. Most likely that's what it is. Maybe it's because it's spinning, but I don't think so. It only uses a few hundred watts for the motor, I'd say. But look at that, how the battery got dragged down from 54 volts down to 53 and a little bit. Let's see here, how much solar is there coming in at the moment? 1.3 kilowatts of solar coming in. So, the battery is compensating that by about a kilowatt. So all good. We have a fairly sunny day out here today. So hopefully we should have a full battery by the time the sun goes down today. Even if we're using the washing machine. You know, what do you think about the weather? <laughs> you too, you too. Go on up the pile. Have you the bone now? That was a good boy. Aren't you? We are running eight uh, batteries, 12 volt uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, each of the batteries has 100 amps. Four of those batteries together to make it 48 volts. And we're having two arrays of those batteries. So it's 200 amps and 48 volts. Uh, if you want to multiply those two numbers, you get the watts per hour. So watt hours. So about 10 kilowatts, roughly. And we can um, run the whole house off at for one day or maybe a day and a half with, if the sun wasn't out at all. Like even on a cloudy day, it actually worked okay. Uh, we still were taking in uh, about five to 700 watts per hour every hour, uh, even on a day when it's black clouds and, and even rain. Even when it was raining, it was still working fine. And in the evening time, it sort of drops off then to a couple of hundred and then zero eventually as the sun recedes. But the battery kicks in at that point. The battery only ever kicks in when there isn't enough solar available. All in all, the whole system actually worked surprisingly well. So if your household uses about 10 to 13 kilowatts a day or units, you can probably just about get away with this setup as it is in the summertime anyway. I don't know how it would uh, bear in the winter time. I'm sure you'd have to upgrade it somewhat. So we had a couple of gray days there where it was really cloudy quite heavy cloud cover and we were just about getting enough power 
to both use what power we normally use but also to charge the battery a little bit but because the battery was a little low we actually ran out in the evening time uh, very late in the evening well after midnight we hardly even noticed it at all uh, but I had to turn on and restart the inverter in the morning uh, it did charge the battery again as soon as the sun came up at about five or six in the morning but um, the AC side actually was off uh, so I had to switch it back on. I'm sure there's a setting for that type of thing and I haven't found that on the inverter yet. Uh, in the evening time, in the very very late at night, we ran out of power. Uh, we ran the battery down accidentally one evening running an electric heater for a few hours and that drained the battery to the point where the inverter shut down. The next morning though it charged the battery again all by itself but it did need a restart for it to actually come back online and power everything on the AC side again. So if the power does run down, there may be a setting in the inverter itself. I haven't found it yet. Even though this generator has a pure sine wave output on it, we still need to find one that has a cleaner output on it so that we can charge our battery bank off of the generator directly. Plus we get to cycle some of our old petrol that way as well. So that's handy because we've got a diesel van and a diesel car. So we've no way of using all that petrol. So uh, might as well use generator power to actually charge the batteries when necessary. Although on a normal day, we're producing enough power to last us uh, throughout the day and to keep the battery nearly full. Um, if we get a, a, a whole week of dull weather or perhaps in the winter time, you'd want to actually maybe have some more solar panels available or maybe some more battery power or a bit of both. If you wanna just save money on electricity or even go off grid, you can do a solar battery utility. And that's really all there's to it. All, all the rest of it is kind of self-explanatory. I did try to the generator mode all right for the generator power, but it was still the AC symbol was still blinking. That means the power is too dirty for the unit to use to charge the battery. Yeah, that's that's all the settings, and you don't really need to know any of that stuff. There is some error codes here in the back too, and some specs. Like if you uh, if you run into trouble, uh, you have some troubleshooting details here as well and here you can see all the different symbols on the display as well i turn off the annoying beeping sound when you press a button as well and the display actually turns itself off as well after a minute here's some fault codes i've had to deal with none of these because um, everything was working fine and there's the specs and that's the story to be honest with you i prefer it simple i prefer not having any kind of uh, technical shenanigans i don't really need a website to be able to connect to although i might get a shunt a battery shunt of uh, victron sometime just to see exactly how much charge we have left in our battery bank but you can tell by the voltage left in the battery as well but at some point if you're getting a little bit of solar every day or even if it's a dull day it'll be fine uh, your solar system, once it's uh, ac adequately spec'd for your usage in at your house or at your location, whether it's off-grid or on-grid, it doesn't really matter. Um, you're not going to have to worry about it at all and you can just run it. But it'd be handy to have a generator with a clean output, especially for the winter time or if you get like a week of dull days in a row and your battery is uh, a bit low. If it's running a bit low, you can top it up if you're not expecting any sunlight but just two or three hours of direct sun and you get like five or six kilowatts in two hours you can in two hours you can get five or six kilowatts and you'll be flying it after that sure that'll top up the battery halfway just in two hours you have 10 more hours then to top it up even if it's cloudy it's fine if you still get about nearly a kilowatt per hour uh, for those of you not familiar with our location we are based in ireland here and we don't get many sunny days like this one however we get many cloudy days we are probably going to have to overspec the solar side on this system i might look into going beyond the 500 volts dc that this unit is able to take in and then maybe limit the voltage uh, before it even comes in from the solar panels just to make sure that we get a good solid amperage even on a dull day let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas on how to do that. Um, also, I'd like to know um, what generators are able to produce a good quality output to use uh, for solar inverters as an AC in or utility charging. 
I'd highly appreciate your input. Thank you so much for watching the video. And again, if you'd like to watch the other videos, uh, the first one on how to set it all up and the second one on testing it, take a look at the videos here and uh, we'll see you the next time. And please take a look at the Vivor website and use our discount code BIRDLAND for 5% off. I put some links in the description below as well if you want to support our channel. And um, we are also on BIRDLAND Homestead and on Gardens for Life. So if you're on one of the two channels, but not the other, please take a look at the other one. I'll put a link below again. All right, see you the next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.